height. <laughs> um, you know how I mentioned that it was like deja vu? It was deja vu. And I was like, sent with it and realizing. Realizing that it is. I'm like in the same situation all over again. Holy shit. Like, it's like, you know, all over again. Third party situation. I mean, someone else, and then whatever that person is tied to. No wonder all of this just feels so familiar. And I knew it too, I knew it. I knew it that last time. That last time, I knew it. I felt like I was in the back burner and I knew it too. And for fear of losing this person, I settled, I settled for what their needs were, what they stated were their needs, what they wanted and disregarded my own wants and needs. I heard a good message today about Patricia 1111 said it. She said, I can't always expect others to speak their truth, but I can always expect myself to do that, to speak my truth. I can expect that of myself. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna speak my truth. I'm gonna speak my truth about this individual and wanting to I just I just want to love him, you know? I just want to love him and I want to be loved. I want to be able to end our phone calls with I love you because it there's always that like <laughs> like I want to and then there's something that holds me back and it's this fear that if I come off too strong I'll push him away I think I might have mentioned in the last video that I even tried letting him go during this month the moon the full moon and cancer and it's And then I thought about it, right? And I, I think I said it in the last one that it's it's the same pull, it's the same energy that wouldn't let me go last time. And then I thought, well, why didn't I feel it when he was in front of me? And then, duh, right? Because it was an energetic pull. And so if he's in front of me, the energy is right there, right? There's no need for a pull because he's right there. <laughs> And so when he's not there, it's like, oh, can't make this stuff up. Can't make this stuff up, right? I have to show you guys something that I thought was so trippy. Hold on, pause. I, I'm not really going to unpause it. I'm just going to walk away for a quick second. Don't mind my messy bed. <laughs> okay, so when I moved into my my place, I pulled this calendar. I don't even remember where I got this calendar from, right? I don't remember where I got it, but I remember thinking, gosh, it's so beautiful. So beautiful. Uh an Egyptian calendar handmade 2009 so when I was unpacking I saw it and I thought oh, I want this out I want this out it's calling to me it's calling to me right it's so calling to me and I wanted to post it this one because I moved in September 
and I just I for the life of me I couldn't like find a perfect place to tack it up and I wanted it in the living room and I couldn't find a place and then finally I found a place in my bedroom but by that time it was already October so this was October October November December threes threes <laughs> And it just so happens that the actual calendar um, months coincided with the way the setup of the months for the last three months of this year or, or to 2020. And it's a 2009 calendar. So I thought that was so crazy. And I remember telling my friend, I was like, hey, I just realized that October has like the dates are aligned. And he's just like, no way. So we looked at it and yeah, it was. So I thought that was pretty crazy. And then I realized, this I realized this morning, because I was looking at the calendar, I was just like, oh, I'm going to have to change it. And I don't think it's going to match the next time, right? Um, I didn't think it was going to match. I don't think it was or maybe yeah it wasn't gonna match and um and then I realized I was staring at it in the morning numerology right 9 10 11 and I think this is the same thing as like 2009 so if I add this up the same thing right 2011 11 11 <laughs> 11 11 so I finally changed it this morning. I finally changed it to January's. And again, I couldn't let it go. I just, it just, the art is just so beautiful. So this is the one for January. And I was just like trying to figure out, well, who are these characters, right? I mean, I've always been fascinated with like history and stuff, um, which has never really made the time to like look into it. Um, but it reminds me of, like, The Mummy. I love The Mummy. It's a great movie, right? <laughs> all, the, all the other movie, mummies, too. I love those. But um, with the exception of the one where, like, The Rock comes in, like, after he has his own. I'm sorry, Rock. I love you. But <laughs> after that one, like, and I'm not usually a fan of sequels. I I'm very cautious about the sequels that I follow um, for all movies unless I really, really like them. And, and I was really onto like the mummy ones. And then when it started like branching off, I was just like, mm -hmm. but anyway, squirrel. Um, so I found out that this is uh, the god Horus holding Queen Nefer Nefertiti's hand. And Queen Nefertiti and her husband the king at the time um, were, um, I don't have my phone because I wrote it on my phone, they started this revolutionary religious, or it was a religious revolution that they started because during their reign, they believed in one God. Um, and I mean, for them it was, they identified it as the sun God, but I mean, all details aside, right? The fact that she was led to believe in one God. You know, when there's history of Egyptians like believing in multiple gods. I I can't help but think just details aside, right? I mean, if we're questioning everything, we're questioning books, uh, religious books, right? Then why am I not going to question this this history, right? That even though it says the sun God, I, I something in me says that it's the God, our God, and and they just kind of, based on the information and the knowledge that they had at that time within context, right? It made sense for them to be. It's just the Sun God, but if we think of our God, our God is a God of light, right? God that of abundance, right? And I just a God of love, and she was actually known for. Um, being like late she had different titles lady of grace um 
uh, sweet, uh, sweet of love or something like that. Um, uh, and, and she had other terms, even her name when translated from Egyptian has a special, what the frick is my phone? Cause I have it on my phone. Um, it, it stands for like, um, I'm gonna have to go get my phone. Pause again. Okay, I found it. Um, it was, uh, <clears throat> so she was known as Lady of Grace, Sweet of Love, Lady of All Women. And her name when translated from Egyptian, or her name in Egyptian is translated as the beautiful woman has come. And so I just, I can't help but think, right, in a time of when feminine energy is rising, to help restore balance, right? In this world, I can't help but think that this is somehow tied in. <laughs> this is somehow tied into that. Like, you know, and I think about in the Bible where it says, you know, God's ways are higher than our ways. God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Like some, there's going to be things that we don't understand, right? Because they're higher levels of thinking, their higher levels of doing, their higher levels of living and being. And I can't help but think that all of this is, is tied into that somehow. You know, looking at things differently, questioning things differently, being open to the possibilities as a way to get closer to God, as a way to understand his message in a in a way that would promote more healing, a way that would promote more love, more helpfulness, more transformation within us all, really. This calendar isn't going anywhere. But anyways, I will be speaking my truth because it's a cycle it's I'm not gonna get caught up in something like that again where I'm I mean if, if I'm instinctively feeling the need to give my love I don't want to do it with restrictions I don't want to do it with fears I, I, I want to do it wholeheartedly right to live my truth to speak my truth and if this under other individual is not ready for that or doesn't know what the, he wants, then that's my answer. That's my answer. And I'm in this flow of releasing and let it go that I'll do what needs to be done for me. Because I'm worth it. <laughs> I'm worth, I deserve the best. I deserve it. That was all. It probably mimics the last one, and I only recorded it a few hours ago, but then I fell asleep, and I didn't really listen to it before. Sorry if it's redundant, but then I'm not. <laughs> Sorry. Because if it's redundant, it's for a reason. <laughs> it's for a reason. So, you guys have a good one. <laughs>